Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. Recently a lot of players have asked about storage systems for gold farms. So this is mine, it's quite beefy, it does about 2500 blocks per hour or one and a half chakras per hour of gold blocks. And this is my storage system that of course uses the 121 crafter to compress the gold to gold blocks. And here I had a huge storage with a lot of double chests and this is all replaced by one shaka box loader. And I will show you this system, but I will also show you a much simpler system. And this is a much smaller gold farm. It's the one by Ian XO4. And I built this recently in my Git Good series, where I took 24 hours and tried to build as many farms as possible. And this was one of these farms. And there I built a storage system, and this is just a slightly improved version. So this farm produces about 300 gold blocks per hour, so the output just goes into double chests. And again the player stands here, hits an armor stand with a sweeping edge sword. So maybe let's look first at this storage here. So the big lens come out, and here is a turtle egg that will lure them out of the portals, and they think they can go over these trapdoors. But they can't. So I have just closed off the back section with a couple of blocks so they will also push each other out but the turtle egg will lure the remaining piglins out and the player stands here and there are a few trapdoors separating the piglins and the player and the piglins are dropped onto cobwebs. And here we're talking about zombified piglins of course or ziglins and a big advantage of cobwebs is that they will stop the ziglins for about 20 seconds so the player has plenty of time to kill them and then the cobwebs just let the items fall through. So this is a 2 by one drop shoot and here we have a slime pusher. So these are two slime blocks and one solid block on top and here I use iron trapdoors and powered blocks simply because you can't accidentally open them. I would assume that the piglins will attack me if I do that, but of course you could also use normal trapdoors or you could use just any solid box here with a lever attached to keep these trapdoors powered. Now here we have a simple clock which is a comparator fader clock that fires once every 2.5 seconds roughly. And then we will first power this piston here which pushes the items over these filter hoppers and then we will power this line pusher and the items that fall on this block will be pushed over like so. And after that the slime pushers pushes them out here. And the second slime pusher will align these items just on the edge of this block. This is why we use a chest which is not a full block. And these items filters, these are the AB item filters. That can pick up a full stack of items or almost a full stack of items. These are slightly better if the items come in batches like so and they're just a little more complicated than regular item filters. You can find it on the wiki. I also made a tutorial a while ago. And we have six item filters for nuggets and at the end we have one item filter for ingots and everything else is burned and don't care about the swords and whatever and the rotten flesh. Here we have crafters and the nuggets will go directly into these crafters here. So we have three item filters going into the crafter, one item filter via this hopper, one item filter via this hopper. The third item filter goes directly into this crafter, so this hopper goes down into the crafter. And the great advantage of nuggets is that there is no other recipe. So for example with ingots you would get pressure plates, or if you had an ingot here it would be crafted back to nuggets. But with nuggets there is nothing else that you can do. So unless you have nine nuggets in, nothing happens. And this crafter is just on a clock. And if you're wondering why it doesn't craft, it's because this redstone torch will still power it. But as soon as new items come in and fill this filter, this crafter is no longer powered and we have it on a clock. And we have a second crafter here that works on the same principles. So these crafters will craft up all of these ingots and put these them into this hopper line. And this hopper line goes into another crafter that is hidden here behind the chest because it goes directly into the chest. And this crafter will craft ingots. And here I have my go-to system for the crafter which is not one-wide tileable. 
but I read this crafter with this comparator through this block. And here's another crafter where I have blocked off all of the slots. So this crafter here has nine blocked slots. So here we have a redstone strength of nine. So this comparator will let a signal through only if it has level nine. Then it will power this redstone dust. This redstone dust will power this repeater and this repeater will power this block over the crafter. So the crafter will be powered, immediately output the item into the double chest here and then we have again signal strength nothing, this repeater is no longer powered. So this is a very simple setup that will craft our ingots to gold blocks and with this setup it cannot happen that you craft nuggets or pressure plates because the crafter will only do something if we have signal strength 9. Now it might be better to replace these, this observer clock with something that is unload proof. These observer clocks can stop if you unload them. So this farm of course has one drawback. Whenever you hit an armor stand you can't eat. So if I try to use the pork chop now nothing happens. So you can run this farm for maybe half an hour. Then you have to take a step back, eat. Then you can continue swinging until of course we have a beacon so we can put in a regeneration beacon. And, but all in all the whole farm was built in like one hour. This storage system took maybe 15 minutes. So that's really not a lot of effort and you can always improve it. Now if you've seen my Git Good series the only change is that I made sure that the Ziglins cannot glitch out here or come out. So I have moved this one block over. And we have a slab here, so this is now a containment for the Ziglins, because if no player is here and swings the sword at the armor stand, then the Ziglins will just fall through the cobwebs. And now let's have a look at the more complicated system. So here we use boat looting. And boat looting is necessary to keep the mob cap empty, so the Ziglins that come out of the portal will be sucked into the boats and the player hits an armor stand, but these mobs will not count against the mob cap. So we have the full mob cap of 70 mobs to spawn here and walk into the portals. The Ziglins in the overworld do not count. And boat looting works only with certain entities. So there was a change in 120 that ruled boat looting out, for example, for slimes or for gunpowder. But for Ziglins it still works. Now, boat loading, the items will just drop down. And they will drop down in roughly a 2x4 area here, which you can see here. So what I did was to have a slime pusher pushing the items into a 1x4 area. And then have this little slime pusher compressing the items. So you see this is all very simple. It's on a very simple clock here. And then these items will be pushed over the sorting system. And this is the usual way how to deal with large amounts of items in the nether. So we align the items against the block that is not quite full. You could also use a chest if you don't have honey. And then they are pushed over these filters here. All of these filters have the AB configuration so they can pick up almost a full stack. And they are also double speed filters. So let's quickly have a look. So these AB filters can pick up 62 items per filter, but double speed filters, and here you can see the configuration, these are well known. In the lower item you need a full stack of the items that you sort and a different filter. So this filter item has to be different from the filter item here below, or you could just fill it up with five full stacks, that also works. And now all of these double speed filters will go into a crafter. And this crafter is simply put on a clock so it's a bit tough to see, but here, whenever items go over this gold pressure plate, I will activate this pulse extender. This pulse extender will create an observer clock and the observer clock will update the crafters that are in here. So let's see if we can access them. So for example, that crafter here is just pulsed five times a second. And we can do that because we don't have any other recipe. So with gold ingots, it's a completely different story. But for gold nuggets you can just put the crafter on the clock. And what we have here is that we have two droppers on the side transferring the gold nuggets. So these double speed filters go into a dropper on this side, a dropper on this side 
and the, directly into the crafter here. We strongly power this crafter using the observer. So this goes directly into the crafter. So we also weakly power these droppers. So not only we will power the crafter with observer clock speed, but we will also power the droppers. So these items will be transferred into the crafter at double hopper speed. And basically the items will come into the crafter at six times hopper speed, which is quite fast. So that's the setup. And then the items go into a second crafter. So let's maybe check this one here. So basically, here we have this crafter going into a hopper and another crafter here going into a hopper. And both hoppers go into this crafter here. This one crafts gold blocks. And the setup is also very simple. This does not have to be one white tileable. So we can just read the crafter, use a second crafter where we locked up all slots. So this will give a redstone signal of nine. That means this comparator will only be active if this crafter is completely filled. And then we will have a redstone signal going up and here. And this will very briefly lock this hopper, but that's not really an issue because the delay is only one redstone tick or two game ticks. So that's fine. And from this crafter we go again, in this case into a dropper. So we can't have a hopper here below because the hopper would pull out the gold ingots. So we put the item into a dropper and then we have a hopper line and this goes to a shulker box loader. And this design has been my go-to design for a while now. It was presented by DocM77 and I think Glotz designed it a while ago. I'm not really sure if there is any tutorial out there it's better than Borkon's shulker box loader because Borkon's loader might lose shulker boxes. So for Borkon's loader, there's about a 3% chance that the box gets lost if it's broken. This shulker box loader here is 100% reliable. Every box that we fill will land in the output chest. And now all you need to do to activate the system. So on one side, I have a clock that I will activate for the slime pushers. This is a manual activation because when unloaded it can break. So in this case the slime pusher could break. And then I just have a turtle egg here. So just in case any piglins get stuck in the portals, they will at some point see the turtle egg and go to the, towards the turtle egg. And then the player stands here and hits this armor stand with an interval of about once per second. And if we do this for a while, then you'll see that all of these item filters start filling up. So we see signal strength larger than one. By the way, the signal strength is displayed by a data pack from Vanilla Tweaks. So that's a free data pack that you can pick up for pretty much every Minecraft craft version. All right, at the end, I have three signal speed hoppers. So why are they signal speed hoppers? Well, the double speed hoppers are a lot on cooldown if they are transferring items. So for example, this hopper here has signal strength two, but it can't pick up items because it's still transferring, so it's in cooldown. Only if it really goes down to one, it will again have the capacity to pick up items. I made a video about this. Basically, a lot of items will get past double speed hoppers, but not past single speed hoppers. So whenever some nuggets are not picked up here, they will end up here. Now, I believe this farm produces just under 200,000 nuggets per hour. So I put in 12 double speed hoppers which work at 24 times hopper speed or 216,000 items. But of course the items do not come in in completely regular intervals. So that's why we use the AB configuration and the extra single speed filters at the end to pick up any straggler nuggets. So we have three double speed filters leading into one crafter. So we have four crafters for nuggets and two crafters for ingots in this case. And we have two more filters for the ingots these go into another crafter and this crafter of course also crafts ingots to blocks. It's really not too complicated to build. So I will post a world download and give you a schematic as well for that so that you can build it if you want to. And that's it for this video. Similar setups can be done for example for slimes where you craft the slime balls to slime blocks. But this is to some degree unique because most from don't have this kind of output that require these amounts of double speed hoppers. But in the case of a gold farm, we're there. Check out the world download or check out the Lightmedica. 
Leave a comment if you have any questions or maybe if you want a tutorial for that. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.